welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. I'm Joye. And this is the Orphan Espresso Apex Manual Coffee Grinder. I want to show you how to use it, how it works, practical application. Okay, let me turn it this way to show you. This is the, the grind setting adjustment. There's a center point that's marked on the housing right there. Okay, there's 10 steps. This is number 10. If you really are into numbers, we'll give you that as a 10. This is the fine direction. All your fines, and it gets coarser as you move to 10. Now you're going into the coarse side. You get into the coarsest. You're up here into immersion cold drip. You come down into the French press area. All your immersion brewing siphon. Now you're getting down into your, whoa, down into your pour over range. I'm sorry I did that. A little farther down, all the way down into the finest AeroPress, all your various Filter settings are down in here. I use, I got an electric coffee maker. I use it about here for electric, but just, that's just me. Okay, if you take away anything from this video, besides that I'm clumsy, I want you to know this. When you look at this handle, you say this is a hand crank coffee grinder. You see a handle, you see a crank handle, and your first instinct is to grab the handle like this. This is only human, okay? You grab the handle like this and you put a death grip on it because you think you're going to be doing a lot of work and you're going to do this big loping overhand grind on it. And you're going to be using your, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your back, all the way down into your feet. Okay? That's not how we grip the grip. That's not how we hold the knob. Grinder is designed to be held like this, a, a knob grip. It's a mushroom knob. We hold it like this. Okay? Now, I'll carefully stand up. This is the action for grinding. Not this. Not this laborious thing here. But this. Spin. We spin the handle. There's not a tremendous amount of resistance. Okay? You're turning the planetary gear. You're spinning the burr. Okay? We spin the handle. This provides the speed to turn the burr, which the speed is directly related to the power to grind the coffee beans. This is how we apply power. Simple spinning, not this. This is not it. This will wear you out. This will make you frustrated. This will spin. I'm using just spinning at my elbow. It's quite comfortable. It's not a big deal. Okay? That's the big thing that I want you to know from this video. Okay? Now, I want to show you s some other things while I got you here. Now, I have this the apex screwed down to this massive cutting board because I like the cutting board I get a lot of stability and it's portable I can take it and put it away put it on the shelf whatever I need to do take it in the other room okay I have it down there the absolute most stability you can possibly get out of this the easiest usage is to screw this down to your counter if that's the kind of application you can use so this is and when you have it done this way when you have it attached to something really firm it's one hand operation you don't even don't even need to hold on to the body except something to do with your other hand while you're grinding coffee okay so i'm gonna go ahead and take this off when you receive the grinder it will be without the cutting board because you know the shipping is enough on such a heavy piece of equipment See, this is just a standard piece of wood. There's, you know, I put some shelf liner on the bottom of it with double sticky tape, so it was kind of dressed it up. But that's what it got. I'll get this aside. Okay. Here's what you see when it comes out of the box. We've got some pretty solid silicone feet that provide padding, scratch resistance on your counter or table. Okay. That's what we come with. Now, in this format, I'll just show you these are some fairly dark beans. Always remember the catch jar. You'll only forget it once. Okay, so put in some so fairly soft beans, a dark roast. I'm going to grind with no other assistance. Here. So I'm pushing down into the body of the grinder, straight down into the counter. Okay, straight down, kind of leaning on it with this hand, and just turning out the grind like that. No problem. Once again, I'm spinning. 
Now, there's this whole issue of speed. What you want to do <coughs> is this is a one to four ratio. One turn here, four turns down here. So we want to spin at least 100 RPMs on the handle. 120, that's two turns per second. Not a lot of resistance, as I said. So you can get a lot more speed out of it than that. But it's not necessarily a good idea, and we'll talk about that later. So this was a dark roast grind. No sticky pads. No board. Okay. I didn't exactly hand that grind properly. Now I'll just go and show you a little more while Barb gets set up. I lost my scoop somewhere in the whole matter. I don't know. I put it over on the counter somewhere. Okay. This is a more of a medium. A medium roast. So I'm going to push straight down on it. And get my speed up. Once again, not a big deal. But I'm working harder. Just spinning it out. I'm having to work a little harder pushing down with this hand to make sure that I've got my stability. The holding hand is also always does the hardest work with a hand grinder. Okay? I get I use this rocking motion to clear the burr of the last little remnants of coffee. And I also want to have my brush on hand so I can check to see if there's any debris or if there's a bean that didn't quite feed in properly. Once I clear the burr, I'm going to hand this over to Barb, and she's going to demonstrate the application of the sticky gel pads, which provides another level of stability. So if my lovely partner can assist me on this, she'll show you. What, what do you want me to do with it? Just hang on to it. I'm going to clean your bottom with alcohol. You want to be sure that the bottom is clean. You leave the these. Dry. You leave the these on. By the way, that provides a little more cushion. You just take the gel pad, peel off one side, stick it in place. These are reusable, washable with soap and water, air dry. And they Good thing you have fingernails. Stick. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they this are one sticky. Is really sticky. Yeah, this is like the second or third use that we have on this particular set. But you can use them over and over again. They won't mark your counter. And they hold really well. They, they operate on the principle. They actually studied the toes of geckos. I like and, geckos. And other, I think spiders as well, yeah. other insects that have really sticky feet. Insect, gecko is not, we have gec a gecko living in our house right now. House, yeah, yeah, it is really good luck like having a gecko, they eat the mosquitoes. And we haven't seen many mosquitoes this year. No, not yet. There you go. Okay, so she's got the pads on there. You hang on to it, because I have to do my job. Okay. okay. You want to make sure your countertop, or, or wherever you're going to stick this, is clean. Because, especially you don't want to have a bit of coffee under it. Now that I've got everything completely wet, I'm sure this is compelling to everyone. Watching a man clean, it's always good. All right, Barb's gonna just, you just set it straight down. Now, these things, they're designed so they, they resist upward motion off of the pad. The way you get it off is you crank it sideways. When you tip it, it comes off, but up and down, it sticks. Okay, that's your sticky pad. Now, I'm going to talk about something that to me is very important. It's how do we speed the grinder? How do we determine how fast to turn it? And is it even important? Well, in my opinion, it is important because I've discovered that since every coffee bean is different, different density, different hardness, roast levels, freshness or staleness as the case may be, um, there's a different speed that you need to apply. Obviously, with a light roast, you need to apply more speed, more power. Speed and power are related. With a light roast as well, you might need to screw it down to a counter or a big block for the stability. Okay? So, what we are trying to do is to maintain 
the minimum speed required to, to grind that particular bean. If you overspeed, you basically step out of the bounds of this intended project usage. And uh, I've always neglected to say that, but this grinder was designed to make a clean grind. Clean, uniform grind. Low dust, low fines, low powder, low small, small particles. And if you overspeed, you start getting into the realm of a dirty grind. You create more dust, more fines, more irregularities of the particles, and you also create more static and more retention. So if you keep it at a minimum, just the speed you need, then you get a nice clean grind. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we do this. I've said we want 100, 110, 120 per minute to run the burr. That transla translates to 400 to 500 RPM. This is where we're running the burr. So I'll just start here. I can go ahead and sit down and do this, okay? I'll turn the burr slowly, see what happens. It stopped. I turn it very slow. When I have, the, have that stop, when I hit that stop point, it's time to turn it a little faster. To restart the grinding, I go backwards and restart. Faster. I'll slow down again. Slow down. It stopped. This tells me I'm grinding too slow. But there's nothing wrong with this. The burr is bi-directional. So the particle size in this direction is the same as the particle size in that direction. If it stops, you go backwards. Your feedback loop goes to your control mechanism, which is up in your head, that says, turn the handle a little faster. It's that simple. Once again, with the sticky feet, Got my hand on top. I'm not gripping it. I got my hand on top. I'm pushing straight down into the table. Not sideways, straight down into the table. I'm grinding my beans out. I'll go up and show you again. If you need to, to some help determining the speed, besides watching this video, there's a metronome on YouTube, and you know, metronome app. YouTube metronome. You can find an or get a real metronome, they're cool. Okay, so once again, I'm holding, I put my hand on the grinder, push into the table, apex grip, apex spin. Toward the end, I can start to feel that it requires less power. So at this point, I can kind of back off. I can slow down a little bit because the burr is doing less work. There's less material in it. Now, at the end of the grind, I clear the, clear the burrs, back and forth, that gets the last particles out of the burrs. I'm wanting to get all my coffee. Now, once again, I come in, check for bits. Finish it off. Never in this process am I really working too hard with pushing with my hand. I'm just spinning it. Got the sticky pads on so it's nice and stable. As you can see, this is a little bouncy because the pads are soft and bouncy. There's a lot of different products to stick things down to counters, by the way. The bottom is smooth. You can use a, a big full-size pad that gets the whole bottom, but you have to be careful. Some things you put down and they're very hard to get off. Okay? Now, if you should hear some kind of funny noise, that's not the gears. You can hear the gears. The way you clear any material that's in the burrs, the, the teeth are shaped like this, just like the teeth in your mouth. Something might get stuck between them, okay? The way we do that, this is how we clear the burrs. If you hear a funny sound, all metal, nothing's going to wear out. That's the way we clear the burrs. Remember, we're spinning 100, 120. If you overspeed all the time, you get a faster grind, but you get a dirtier grind. If we hit our minimum effective speed, we're basically running at just the level we need to keep the grinder moving smoothly and efficiently. I think I've covered the things that I, I really want you to know before you receive your grinder so you'll have a good experience when you take it out of the box. Remember, apex grip, apex spin, clearing, 
good luck with your grinder. I hope you enjoy it.